Hello YouTubers, today we're going to be servicing a diesel Golf. Just normal TDI Golf. First thing we're going to do is drain the oil. Like I said, the best thing to do is get everything nice and warm. And what I like to do is just take off the oil cap and leave it off. Just so you know that, you know, when you drain the oil, you've got no oil left in it. I'm just going to take out that as well. And release that. So, first thing we're going to do is drop the oil. Now we're underneath the car, so we're going to remove the old cover. This one is just cable tied. All these things, the bolts go. There's one bolt left on it, but we don't need to take it off. So, as you can see, this is the sump. It's obviously got a new sump because these are very low. Um, so they do tend to uh, break the sums quite easily. Now if your oil light happens to come in on one of these, your oil sensor is here. Sometimes these, these wires can break or get snapped off. So when your oil light comes on, obviously you still need to stop the car, but it might not be because there's no oil in. It could be because this sensor here isn't actually on. So that's just something to remember. So we just uh, get the old bolt at the back. It's nice and warm. And the drainer in 19 mil very much. 19 or 20 that's 19 mil. now see if I can do this without getting covered in oil I did. No oil on my fingers. Yeah. So let that drain off. Check the old fan belt when you're here to make sure there's no cracks or anything in it. Well, that's doing. That's fine. Now, obviously, don't forget to put the bolt back. I know it sounds simple, but it can be forgotten. So I just like to do it just so you definitely know it's in. I do. Now, take off the oil filter. Put the new one in, fresh oil. Now, obviously, uh, we're going to take the oil filter off now. Now, you can use one of these. This is adjustable. So as you spin it in and out, this goes in and out. And this is your oil filter here. You can get special, like, sockets that goes over them. But if this works, it's okay. And it does, so we're okay. People over tighten these, and uh, you can crack them, so you have to be really careful. You don't want to, um, obviously, over tighten these. So it's just a simple case of pulling that up. It can be a bit messy. So you can just let it drain. Let it drain for a few seconds. Oh, it's actually falling off, so that's okay. So let it drain for a few seconds just to get the rest of the oil out. You can just leave it like that. Uh, it's not a big deal. Again, always best to check against the new one to make sure it is okay. You can put it in just to make sure. Give a bit of a. It just clips in, so we know that's that's now in. So we know it's right. There's also a little rubber seal you get as well. A new O-ring that just goes there, so you can just replace that as well. You get it with it. We'll do that as well. So now that's done. Now, simple, just put it back. Now, make sure you actually get this in the locator hole. If you don't, 
obviously it goes too high so you, you can't really go wrong but just make sure you get it down and always hand tighten this because if there's any problems it will stop don't put the machine on it or don't put the little gadget on it straight away so just get it as tight as you can by hand and then you can go with this it's only 25 newtons which is not a lot of pressure um, I just tighten it by this just give it a nice nip with that tighter Now, let me know that's okay. So now what I'm gonna do is put the oil in. Now, like I say on all, all the service videos, it's important to get the right oil for your car. This one happens to be 530 Volkswagen spec. There's a 530 Ford spec, there's a 530 Audi spec, there's a 530 Mercedes spec. There's loads of different types of oil, so make sure you put the right oil in. So I'm gonna put four liters in this first because I know it'll take four liters. Most would take a little bit more, but I know I can safely put four litres in, start the car, let the oil filter fill up, and then recheck the level. You don't want to pour this too fast because it can actually bubble up and spit all over. And it's just messy, so you want to just nice even pour. So that's four litres gone in that now. Please be right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give that about 30 seconds just to get all the way down. Double check it with my dipstick. Now on this particular one, the levels are straightforward again. You've got that little hashed out area. Hopefully you can see that, the minimum maximum mark. So you, you, you go into the top of that little dotted hashed out area hopefully you can see that now we've we've gone over the mark but that's okay because we've still got to put oil in the into the filter so that's not a problem so I'm going to start this now let the oil light turn off I'm going to leave it about another 30 seconds just to let everything go off and I'm going to shut it off and then um, we check the level again. Now a good thing to check is once you've got it running is just double check the, the, the oil filter's not leaking and also the sump nut's not leaking. It's just a handy quick check. So it's been running for a few seconds, and well, 30 odd seconds, I'm gonna let it Drain for a bit more, dip it again, and see if we need to add some. Now, we're actually lucky, because we're bang on, bang on the mark there. So that's it. Don't have to do any more with that. On to the next thing. Sorted. Now, the air filter. This one's just a couple of Phillips screws. Now, all you have to be aware is this wire, you don't pull that wire too hard. So all you're doing is just twisting and lifting, just like that, and that comes off. Now, like I say, it's always nice just to compare them. And you can see that, but also just to make sure that the same length, the same height, and absolutely everything. Another handy thing to do, which we're gonna do, another good thing to do is give it a good hard blow. I think you know what I'm talking about there. If she's an old car and she hasn't been serviced in a while, just give her a good blow to blow off the cobwebs, you know what I mean? Can't beat it. Ah, put the so, just in case, put the new one back in. <laughs> That's not now this is normally a simple job to put this in, but we seem to have been trouble with this, but anyway. <laughs> so, just put the new one in, simple. Now all you want to make sure is these little clips line up into there, because if they don't, the car start making a funny noise. You literally angle it and push it in. So I'm lifting this up and pushing it in the same time. Now, get them all in. The middle one doesn't want to go in, so I'm just going to stop it from moving like that now 
push it down and screw it in. God, the screws and blowing and all sorts with this car. Ooh, ah. Oh, behave. Now, sorted, on to the next thing. Now, the next thing is the, oil, the diesel filter. They are simple, a few people get scared of these. Just a few little tricks you need to know. Nothing serious. The first thing is, there is actual marks on here. There's arrows showing in and out. So you can't really go wrong. And especially when you line it up against the new one, you can only really put the pipes into one place. So, you know, because this, this big circle just lift out. This big circle here matches up with that circle. So you know this wire has to go there and that one has to go there. It is fairly straightforward. The way I like to do it is, obviously first thing, just screw this out a little bit just to loosen up the filter. You don't want to screw this out too much because they're a nightmare to get back in. Just enough so the filter is free as you can see. Next thing you need. Just some pliers. Pull back these clips. Can be a bit tricky sometimes, but they will go back. Just like that. So that one and that one. Just so they're off enough. And just pull this clip out. This clip just literally pulls out, nice and simple. And this then just lifts up. Bit of a wiggle, that lifts up, like that. And what I like to do, if, if these are a bit tight, is just very gently spin the pipe. Spin the actual rubber. And that pipe comes off a lot easier. And what I like to also do is put it to this side. Once you know you put it to that side, you cannot get these mixed up. You just can't. It's the same again with this one. Spin it just to free it up. So that just then squeezes out. Now, hopefully, you can actually see down there just how black that is. Can you see that on camera? Just how black that is compared to the new one. Now, it is best to pour diesel in these if you don't you only have to bleed it and these are a nightmare to bleed so what I like to do is put it back it's easy to do it once is it make sure that that's definitely tight at the bottom so just slide it back in put the pipes on take off that put that pipe on now I like to put the diesel in there because it's just easy because you don't have to hold everything at the same time so I'm just going to put these clips back on properly and then I'm going to pour the diesel in Now the way I like to do it, I got this old squeezy bottle and I just pour the diesel in there. Just don't put it just makes... Right, whatever you do, don't put LucasAid Sport into your engine. <laughs> this is diesel. But the, what I like about this bottle is when you tip it up, it doesn't come out until you actually squeeze it. So I just, and I just, you just have to be careful and just squeeze it just into there. Now I actually forgot to keep one pipe off so you can actually fill it because the air needs to come out of this, otherwise it won't fill. Doesn't want to come out properly. Now that's literally filling up. And when it starts coming out here, you know you're full. And the beauty of this way is you shouldn't have a problem in starting the car either. It might take a few minutes, but it's not the end of the world. Bubbles and forever blowing bubbles. You can drink it if you want. Give you energy. <laughs> Good 40 to the, 40 yeah. to the gallon. What do you do to the gallon? Are you good there? 
think we're full. Now, as you can see, we're full. That more or less took that full bottle. Very good. Now, I just pop this fella back. Now, that just clip in. Sometimes it needs to go down a little bit. So just, just like that, just a little tap. Because it does need to go down a bit further than. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Do that again. So, pop that down. Lift up the whole thing. Slide the clip in. Clips in. Slide this in. Now this should start without cutting out. Hopefully. So, we're going to leave the camera running. And see if it keeps starting or cuts out. It's gone too far that clip now. Now, like I said, what you want to do is, this is going to start regardless. If you don't fill that, it will start for a few seconds and then it will cut out. So you want to leave this running for about a minute and then if it keeps running for a minute, you'll have, should have no problems. Uh, so here we go. Fingers crossed. Hopefully now that's, uh, to be fair, that would have normally have cut out by now. Um, it's not a big deal if it does, but it's just so much easier to do it that way, I find. So I'm just wiping everything down to make sure there's no, no oil leaks, no diesel leaks. Everything's back on. Tighten up the little fillets to stop the filter moving. for a few more seconds and then we'll do the levels. Now we're going to check the levels. What the fuck is that thing? See that? What is it? It's a diesel fly. <laughs> right. Now, do the old uh, windscreen wiper wash bottle. Again, it has the windscreen wiper logo on it. They're all fairly straightforward. Add a bit of additive. Top it up with water. What's the difference between that and fairy liquid? Fairy liquid, well I personally wouldn't use fairy liquid and the reason why I wouldn't use fairy liquid is fairy liquid has a lot of salt in it. Now, it takes years but if you put it on your car, you'll, you'll see on some old cars all the, the rust around the windscreen because the fairy liquid rust, rusts it so personally I wouldn't use it. Just get screen washed, like, well, not so much a lot cheaper, but you can buy cheap screen wash and it's just a lot better. Now, we'll check the old expansion bottle. Again, looks, doesn't look like pure water, which is good. This gives us an idea of how much antifreeze is in it. Now we've got, well, about one and a half bubbles. So, we, we need a little bit of antifreeze in this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck out all the water that's in here, which is about a litre, and I'm going to top it up with about a litre of antifreeze, and then we'll know we've definitely got enough. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this, because I can't find my sucker at the minute, I'm just going to squirt it out. So I'm just going to use this a few times, and then uh, once it's empty we'll show you putting it back up. Now this is a, a common problem with people's cars and they don't realise. That's kind of going browny colour now, that shouldn't be that colour. That's the antifreeze that's going in as you can see, it's pink. That's the colour it should be. So basically this has just been in for a long time, so it's another thing to be aware of. Just make sure that, you know, the colour of your antifreeze, just because you've got antifreeze in, doesn't mean, I mean look at that, doesn't mean it's like good. So if it's been in for a long time, you're gonna have these sort of problems. Now by rights, what you should really do 
with this and I think it's what we're going to do we're going to completely drain this system and and re-put antifreeze in because that's that's just definitely no good for a car um, so yeah so basically we're just going to drain the radiator there's no point of showing you this but uh, we're just going to drain the radiator let everything go out put about three to four liters of antifreeze in top the rest with water and we're going to be sorted then now that was quick wasn't it power of editing so we've done that we've drained it there's nice pink fluid in here now so what we're going to do is because this could be airlock we're going to start the car leave this off for about half an hour it's going to take for the fan to kick in once the fan kicks in we can then put the lid back on here and we know we're okay right the fan's just kicked in it's nice and hot now so i know i'm going to be okay put this back on and we're going to have no problems with it overheating towards an airlock Now, so the last thing we're going to check is the power steering. It's easier to take them off with these pliers because... Now the level's on it. And we're on the level, so we know that's good. Simple check. Get a tiny bit of a nip. Now, next thing is the brake fluid. Now, hopefully you'll be able to see this. Yeah, that's, you can see that, so that's fine. The, the level is there, so it's straight down there, not a bother. No, you can see it just down there. Now, that's basically the, 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 the simple things to check. Obviously, there is certain things on certain cars that I'm not gonna go on into that because it'll just take too long otherwise. But another good thing to do is when you're here, just check pipes and stuff. Like, for example, I can see this pipe here is ready to blow. So there's gonna be no harm to change that. Now, it's quite long, but you can actually just cut this out, put a connector in there and replace it. So that's the thing, I haven't got any pipe to do that, unfortunately, we're gonna to have to get some pipe for this car. But if we leave that and that goes, that, we, we're, we're gonna have problems. So there's no point getting broken down for stupid things like that. So go through the whole car and just check your pipes, make sure nothing's rubbing, and then you shouldn't have a problem in the future. You might as well fix this now before it causes you a problem. So that's basically everything checked and, and replaced. So next thing to do, case back on, cover, take that out, slot that back on, like that, it's in, no harm, give it a bit of a wipe, and right on here when it was serviced, even though this car, to be fair to it, has a uh, service light, uh, but we're still going to write on there. Now, we just wrote on here when, when it was, I just put FS for full service so we know when it was last done. Now look, I hope this video helps. Uh, any questions, just go down below. I can answer as many as I can. And that's it, so uh, hope it helps. Thumbs up the video, subscribe, and don't forget, get your hands dirty.